The question of how to choose a 3D printing process is an endless source of conversation within the additive manufacturing industry. To help sort this out, we have with us one of the foremost authorities on additive manufacturing. Ellen Lee is the technical leader of additive manufacturing for research and advanced engineering at the Ford Motor Company. Ellen, it's great to have you with us. Thank you, it's good to be here. Um, oftentimes, when those are, who are not as familiar with additive manufacturing, they tend to think about it as one process. But as we know, it's actually a family of processes and many, many different types of materials. And so the number one question is really, what do you need it for? Is it for prototyping? Do you need it to be functional? Or are you looking for a series production application where you really need to scale the material? Once we understand that question, then we'll ask, what does it need to do? So let's say we're looking for a uh, manufacturing tool that needs to support um, high temperature and pressure. Then we would consider what types of materials um, would suffice. The next very important question that we um, would have to ask at the same time is, how big is the thing that you want to make? So once we understand those, then we start to think about the business case or the value. Does it make sense to use an additive solution over a um, conventional process? We're always kind of benchmarking to what that um, value or business case is on the conventional standpoint. Once you have all of those answers, how do you think about the, the relative performance of the major you know, 3D printing process families? Um, we start thinking about what material properties or what ma uh, material performance is needed. So um, often a question is, do we need really high feature detail or resolution for the part? And those often lead us to a resin-based system. Um, we have an eye for supporting types of applications and materials that will allow us to scale. Um, and this leads us to this interesting case where um, your prototype parts become really your first iterations of the production parts, if that's kind of the, the goal that you have for um, printing the part. Tell us a little bit about um, isotropy. Does that come up much when you're selecting a 3D printing process? Uh, we understand that there's anisotropies in a lot of different processes as well. But uh, for example, in carbon, um, because it's a much more isotropic material, um, we can focus more on how we design that part to be manufacturable within the process, where in some other processes, including extrusion, we need to be aware of how you orient the part, um, both based on manufacturability as well as the resulting performance of the part. We have a lot of applications that do require um, some fluid to be transferred throughout. And so the porosity or the water air tightness becomes very important. The photopolymer um, processes like carbon um, are inherently watertight. Um, so in these cases, we would need to consider the materials that are available and their compatibility with the various fluids that we're using. In automotive applications, you have a lot of parts that might be seen by the customer inside the car, on the outside of the car. Fine features, surface detail, stuff like that. How do you think about achieving detail like that? You know, we can either think about doing post processes, secondary processes like painting or polishing um, and things like that. Um, but our preference is always to do as much as we can with the primary process because each additional step um, or secondary process just means more cost to that part. Um, and so being able to um, have a process that gives us as close to a, an acceptable appearance part um, with the primary process itself is quite important for us for making that um, value case. When you're choosing among the wide variety of 3D printing processes, um, how important is it that a process has a track record in the automotive industry or has seen parts go through the rigorous certification and qualification process? So we have very well-defined ways to ensure that we meet reproducibility and process capability for our conventional processes, but there's very little available today because, you know, it's a kind of a new field to be using additive manufacturing for production parts. Um, so having a um, proven track record is extremely helpful in gaining confidence from our teams that this process will work. There are a lot of 3D printing processes out there to choose from, and Ellen Lee is one of the foremost authorities in choosing among them and developing these processes for real applications. So it's, it's really a pleasure to have you with us. 
Thank you.